focus. It's a big international story, big story back home also. What are epidemiologists saying and what are the economists, health economists saying about this fight? I have one such person with me, Dr. Eric Feigl Ding. He's an epidemiologist joining us on this broadcast. Thank you very much, Dr. Eric. My first question to you simply is this. Where have we reached in our fight or a hunt for a vaccine? I think we're making good progress to the vaccine. We have uh, several, several teams working on different vaccines. Um, uh, for example, the Oxford group believes that we will have potentially a million doses ready for healthcare workers sometime this fall. Um, in terms of general population, I think it will be in 2021 when we're, uh, it's available for okay. millions, hopefully billions of people in spring of 2021. That's good to hear. That's good to hear, Dr. Eric. Now, uh, I, I noticed that uh, your designation says that you're a health economist. What does that mean and why is it important more so in these COVID times? Yeah, I think health economics, There's a, we also um, tally up and calculate the cost of health care. Because in addition to um, the epidemiology that we are normally talking about, there is also, well, say for a drug, is it cost effective? Well, it reduces illness duration by four days, like remdesivir. But it doesn't actually significantly reduce mortality. And if a drug doesn't reduce mortality, is it really cost effective to charge um, an exorbitant amount of money for that small of a healthcare return? And then, of course, we know that healthcare costs are going to be rising a lot. And I think it's also really important to give free testing and, and potentially free treatment because if you don't offer the free testing, people are not incentivized to get tested. If you don't test people, then people, this epidemic will actually get worse. So I think economics around healthcare is really critical during this pandemic. All right. My final question to you, Dr. Eric, uh, there's a global debate around hydroxychloroquine. Uh, India has uh, exported this to a lot of countries. You've got uh, many studies like the Lancet, which says that it's not good. In fact, it's of no use. Uh, and it causes harm also. Whereas the ICMR, an Indian agency, says that, no, it's just fine. Uh, you can continue to use it. Where do you stand on this? Well, there's been a lot of hydroxychloroquine studies uh, so far, and there's more in the pipeline. There's What happened was, early on, there was a French researcher who published one uh, case report. A case report being just a bunch of cases who took it and they got better. But they had no control group whatsoever. And so the trials are going on, but what we know, now have are a huge registry of 96,000 patients across all six continents. 15,000 of them took uh, the drug, 81,000 did not, and we compared them. And the people were comparable, but except for two things. They're, Arrhythmia was higher among those who took hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine, and uh, the risk of death was 30 to 50 percent higher among those who took hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine. And this is a very large study of 96,000 people across all continents. So, I, in certain ways, even you know, we expected a benefit, but not only is there no benefit, it seems to be associated with increased risk. Now, it's not a trial, but I think we really need to be careful that it, it doesn't look good and the known arrhythmia and mortality risks perhaps will outweigh any benefit for this coronavirus. Okay, okay. Dr. Eric Feigelding, thank you so much for speaking to NDTV.